Uh, thanks all for having me. Uh, my name is Dong Song. I'm the founder at Oasis Labs and also a professor at UC Berkeley. Today, I will talk about decentralized data governance and data tokenization for a responsible data economy. So as we all know, uh, blockchain has made a tremendous progress. Uh, with Bitcoin, it brought us self-custody of money. And with Ethereum, it brought us programmable money and financial assets. So the question is, what, uh, what's next? Uh, what additional new capabilities and power can blockchain um, bring to us? So to answer that question, let's look at in another really important domain, which is data. As we all know, data is a key driver for modern economy and the lifeblood of AI and machine learning. And the more and more data is being collected every day, and the global data economy is growing exponentially. However, a lot of this data is really sensitive, and handling sensitive data has posed unprecedented challenges to both individuals and businesses. So first, individuals have lost control over how their data uh, is being used. Uh, oftentimes, users' data has been sold or uh, misused without users' awareness or consent. And also, at the same time, users' data has been locked in different uh, silos uh, in the different uh, web services and so on. And more importantly, a lot of valuable data is being locked in, data, uh, in different data silos. So even for businesses uh, and uh, for the society, it's difficult to actually utilize the data to extract valuable insights uh, from data uh, to have it better serve the society. So how can we address these challenges? An important concept I want to uh, introduce here is data sovereignty. So what is data sovereignty? Uh, it means uh, a number of uh, several different things here. Uh, one, it's important to establish data rights and it enables controlled use of data with the privacy protection and the compliance to uh, data use policy. And we also want to create data assets to enable frictionless use of data with value attribution. And with uh, these capabilities, uh, we also hope to enable data commons, a new type of structure for decentralized data science. So how can we achieve this? Here, we propose to build a new type of uh, data governance platform that is auditable, policy compliant with decentralized trust. In particular, this data governance pl platform satisfies a number of desired properties. First, control. Uh, we want to enable data owners and data producers to be able to specify policies of how data can be used and also enable data consumption uh, to uh, comply with uh, data use policies. And it needs to be privacy preserving. For example, data confidentiality needs to be protected during data consumption. And we also want to support auditability. For example, data usage is locked on the immutable ledger and data producer and other authorized parties can easily audit how data has been used. And also, um, <clears throat> very importantly, we want to build on this uh, with decentralized trust. So we don't need, uh, do not need to rely on any uh, trust on any central party. So what are the key components um, that are needed to build uh, uh, this uh, data governance platform? Essentially, we need to combine uh, technologies from blockchain, decentralized key management, secure computing, and also uh, be able to uh, track data use policies and uh, do compliance check on program policies. So this is how we can put these different com components together to enable this new decentralized data governance. So in this paradigm, uh, data providers will um, <coughs> encrypt their data and attach the data use policy and commit this um, information to the blockchain. And the data analyst and data consumer uh, who wants to use the data can submit their program that may run on the data. And the access controller uh, will get the latest information about users' data rights and data use policy from the blockchain. And then it will evaluate 
the program that's submitted um, by the data consumer. Uh, one component of the access controller is that the analyzer will check um, the use case, the use policy against the program and to, to ensure that the program satisfies the uh, desired uh, use policy. And it will send a proof of policy compliance to the distributed key manager. And then the access controller will instantiate a secure execution environment. And the key manager will send the decryption key to the trusted execution environment, which then uh, can um, fetch the data and decrypt the data and run the program. And in the end, to generate a result data capsule with the results uh, encrypted and with the appropriate residual policy attached. And this information is also committed to the blockchain. And then the digital consumer can then um, receive the results and depending on the residual policy, um, can then um, view the results or query, for example, a training machine model and so on. And finally, the data provider can inspect the blockchain to see how their data was accessed. So overall, this is a decentralized data governance platform that enables the desired capabilities and properties that I mentioned earlier. And at Oasis, we have built up the parcel architecture to enable all those uh, capabilities and to enable this decentralized uh, data governance platform. And uh, 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 the Oasis uh, parcel architecture provides the, uh, the API and SDK and also apps for the, uh, for the users uh, and the developers to manage their consent and also do their app management. Uh, for example, the uh, users can use the OSIS Steward app to set permissions for applications um, from uh, developers who may want to use uh, users' data in this privacy-preserving policy compliance manner. And furthermore, with the OSIS parcel uh, uh, architecture and SDK, we enable data tokenization, which helps create a, a new type of NFTs. Uh, we call them data-backed NFTs. So with the, uh, with the parcel uh, platform and SDK, so in this case, uh, the data producer can upload uh, data assets to the platform. And then the data producer can mean a token containing the asset and the data use policy for the token holders. And the data producer exchanges um, these uh, data back the tokens to, uh, with the data consumer uh, for other tokens, uh, for payments or uh, other types of tokens and so on through the various different types of exchanges. And the data consumer can then gain access to the data assets with these data tokens and then run analysis in confidential compute uh, that satisfies the data use policy. And finally, the data consumer may receive the analyzed results and can tokenize these results starting uh, the whole cycle again. And also with these data tokens, we can further enable data token aggregation so that from individual data assets, uh, they can also join uh, data pools to form, for example, data ETF and the data DAOs. And these data pool tokens can then be uh, exchanged uh, as well. So overall, data tokens um, establish an important new asset type for DeFi. Data tokens are the next generation uh, NFTs. Um, uh, in particular, uh, these data-backed NFTs. And they can be used in different types of DeFi applications such as in DEX, in lending, liquidity pools, and so on. And they represent unique access ownership to specific uh, data. Utilizing the uh, parcel platform uh, developed by Oasis Labs, we have enabled new uh, use cases, including, for example, uh, data-backed NFTs for genome sequencing. For example, utilizing the technology here uh, we actually uh, minted, uh, uh, actually uh, there has been, uh, so George Church has minted his uh, NFT 
uh, uh, for his uh, gen genetic data. And George Church is, um, uh, is considered as the, the founding father for modern genomics. And that's just one example. Uh, data tokens can enable many, many different types of uh, use cases. Uh, so here's an example where using <laughs> data tokens, one can help uh, music bands to raise money by tokenizing and selling uh, streaming royalty. So furthermore, as I mentioned, um, one of the big issues users face today also is their data has been locked in different data silos um, in different web services. With the GDPR, the privacy uh, regulation, uh, it has established users' rights to data portability, uh, where the data subject shall have the right to receive the personal data concerning him or her and so on. So uh, this is a great time to enable users to um, take more control of uh, their data. So utilizing uh, the uh, capability supported by this portability uh, rights and uh, utilizing the platform provided by Oasis Parcel and so on, users can now uh, essentially download their data from these different uh, third-party data silos uh, from uh, personal data vault and then create uh, data assets and data tokens out of uh, its own data to enable its data to uh, be utilized for um, in a privacy-preserving way for other applications as well, and to help users to maintain and to gain more benefits from their data. And also uh, a further step, as uh, different uh, data owners and producers join different data pools and so on, we can establish a new type of structure that we call data commons for decentralized data science. So uh, in this setting, uh, data owners and producers, they can register their uh, data sets with the policy specified uh, into different data pools listed in distributed data catalogs. And the data consumer and data analysts can search these data catalog catalogs to find relevant data and then exchange um, and get uh, relevant uh, data tokens uh, for consumption. And then the data consumers can submit their analysis program and the platform can then enable this, uh, these programs to, uh, to run in a, a distributed secure computing environment while ensuring the program is compliant with the desired policies. So with this approach, it helps reduce friction of data usage, remove data silos, and ensure strong security and privacy protection and help users to gain more benefits from their data. And here, I do strongly believe that in 10 years, data trials and data commons will become the predominant ways of utilizing diverse sources of data, enabling ownership economy where users can benefit from their, their data as owners and partners. And with this technology, we hope that this can help build towards a responsible data economy where it helps users to establish and enforce their data rights and data rights uh, serve as a foundation of the uh, data economy and prevent misuse and abuse of data and enables fair distribution of value created from data to enable users to gain uh, more benefits from their data and also ultimately enable efficient data use to maximize societal welfare and economic efficiency. So with this, we hope that with the um, uh, the progress of uh, blockchain essentially, besides enabling self custody of money, programmable and uh, of money and uh, uh, financial assets, it can enable data sovereignty and the programmable data assets. So for uh, others uh, and also learning more, um, you can um, try out the parcel today and go to uh, Oasis Labs website. It's available in beta today. Uh, and uh, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, John. Uh, appreciate you coming on and uh, talking about this with us.